Hi guys and welcome back to another North Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23 and today we are going to be tackling our very own testing session here in Qatar. Now not quite testing in the sense of trying different packages, different bikes, different setups etc but more so just reliving the MotoGP 2024 Qatar test and today's topic, the subject, is talking about Monster Energy Yamaha's rider Fabio Quattararo. Before we get into this video and have a good old discussion, I would like to mention that uh, Sergio23 did make Fabio Quattararo's fantastic winter testing helmet with the uh, sort of devilish snowman on the top of that new white helmet. So yeah, absolutely brilliant job from Sergio. It looks fantastic. Didn't quite have the number to put it on my own personal rider, so Cheshire Charlie, the number 66, he's hooked us up and provided us with the Fabio Quattararo number 20 as well for the Yamaha for our personal rider. Now, of course, if you want that, if you want to download that, you can check it out at the end of the video. But if you're on PC, you can just type in Fabio Quattararo and you'll find them on PC. Uh, not a good start there as we go deep into turn six, so my apologies for that. But yeah, today's subject, we need to discuss a few things. Of course, we, we touched base last time upon Luca Marini when we're discussing his 2024 future. With the factory Yamaha team, I think it's a little bit different because where Luca Marini is beginning a new part of his career, there's a new sense of excitement and a, and a whole opportunity, a whole open door for the half-brother of Valentino Rossi that it just seems exciting and nothing can go wrong. We come to effective what is the other side of the spectrum. The other Japanese manufacturer, which of course in turn is still struggling like Honda is, but with a little bit more of a kick in the teeth. If you're a fan of the blue brand, then you'll know that there's been a disappointment since 2022. Fabio Quattararo looks absolutely unstoppable. Pekko Bagnaia was uh, out of it. He was 91 points behind. It wasn't going to win. Fabio Quattararo's got the business done. This is going to be a second world champion for the Frenchman in as many years. And then, bang, Pekko gets it sorted. He comes back from 91 points down and wins the MotoGP World Championship. Since that point, we have not seen Fabio Quattararo lead the World Championship. We haven't seen him fighting right up there, winning races, featuring on podiums all the time, and just generally being the Fabio Quattararo that we know and love since 2019, possibly even earlier, although he was more or less in Moto2. So, to see Fabio go down this downhill spiral, and to hear Yamaha are still not making improvements, that Yamaha still with the same problem, the status quo, that plagued Valentino Rossi, Maverick Vinales, Franco Morbidelli, Cal Crutchlow, Andrea Di Vizioso. Those problems still persist. Something needs to be changed in Yamaha. And for me, one thing that would have been a great addition, which unfortunately didn't happen, is the return of Davide Brivio coming back to Yamaha. I thought that was going to be a a sign seal delivered thing that that was going to happen but he's actually ended up at uh, Trackhouse MotoGP's Aprilia team so that's an avenue that's now gone and now they need to figure out what they can do with the Yamaha to get it more competitive I think sometimes trying to be the jack of all trades makes you the master of none and what I mean by that is that there's been a lot of discussions in the past about Yamaha needing more horsepower needing more straight line speed needing more acceleration out the corners and in turn doing so now that the Yamahas have an additional couple of uh, miles per hour to their uh, to their to their arsenal they're now struggling with more and more lack of rear grip and cast my mind back to when Davizioso was the test rider or the satellite rider but with a factory spec bike and factory support he was saying that that's the opposite direction than where they need to go they don't need to be focusing on trying to get a faster motorcycle. They need to sort out the issues with the rear tyre. And it seems to have been that's what our Maverick Vinales was saying. Valentino Rossi said it as well. Franco Morbidelli had a very similar riding style to what Rossi did. So pretty much whatever they said would work. And I think judging back of watching Yamaha and just seeing them so far down. Frankie Morbidelli of course was having a torrid time with the factory bike since his injuries. Fabio Quattararo looks completely deflated. So what is it going to do in 2024 for the Japanese brand? Can they bounce back? Will we see a new Fabio Quattararo this year? Will he have some more speed? Will he have more confidence? I guess that is what we're going to discuss today with amongst a few things as well. But something to mention 
is I'm not a guy that really looks at testing to say, oh, that's your world champion there because he finished first in testing. Oh, that guy at the back there who will never amount to anything because he didn't do well in testing. That's not really what I tend to do. It's a specific track, specific conditions, everything can change. So for me, looking at the Yamaha results from first and foremost Fabio Quattararo finishing as high as 14th. Now we don't do only have two Yamahas in MotoGP now, so it's not too far, not too hard to find where the Yamahas are. And unfortunately, it's not in the top 10. It's not been in the top 10 for a while, and that's a concern. They're now getting more assistance from Dorna with getting more uh, tests and more uh, availability to test, but Yamaha didn't take it. My understanding is that Yamaha didn't want to take those additional tests and have Cal Crutchlow do more work. Instead, they opted to go the opposite route of Honda, where Honda decided we're going to have like 26 tests a year. We're going to go absolutely crazy and we're going to just pile everything on to make sure that this bike becomes stronger and faster. I, I mean, why isn't Yamaha doing that? The factory boys in Iwata would probably relish in the opportunity to do more work on the Yamahas. It's a bit of a... It's question marks with question marks attached. I don't really understand that. Must be a more of a cost-related thing or something that's uh, probably hidden behind the scenes that we don't really know or understand as a spectator or pundit or whatever you may be to the sport. But regarding Fabio Quattararo, looking at the testing, we're, still, we're not seeing any improvements. He, he looks deflated. He looks miserable, to be honest. I think it could very well be the last season with Yamaha. If we haven't seen any mention of a contract change or uh, any agreement for the halfway point of the season, I think it's going to be a done deal that he disappears somewhere else. We always see a link to Aprilia. Alessio Spargo is coming to the end of his tether with MotoGP. I think he's getting ready to settle down and be a great father that he looks to be. Maybe Fabio Quattro is going to jump in that Aprilia seat. Maybe he will find more rhythm with a, man with a manufacturer that has done an exponential job of improving over the years. I mean, cast your minds back. What, 2021? We still didn't see an Aprilia winner. 2022? Aprilia are actually fighting for the championship. Crazy. And then now, with Aprilia in 2024, mm, difficult to say, but I'd like to think they're still going to be right up there at the front, but I do feel if Maverick Vinales doesn't win a race this season on the Aprilia, I don't think he ever will. A little bit of a side topic there for future conversation. But I do feel that Fabio, if he moved from Yamaha to the Aprilia team, that would be a fantastic result. Now, from my understanding, it's still the same engine package and the same idea and uh, inline four, I believe it's called. Not fully caught up with the understanding of the uh, actual mechanical side of the motorcycle. So if I say something that's wrong, I'm not an expert and I will completely own the fact that I don't know much about actual motorcycles. And more so from the fans perspective, from just the bikes, it's more so the riders and what they can do with their track records and uh, proven experience in MotoGP. So, with that in mind, I do feel that Aprilia could be a good fit for Fabio. Are we? Sh should we be looking already at Fabio to move on to a new team? That's a question mark. I don't think we can really say yes or no, but it's certainly something that will be in the back of the world champ former world champion's mind. Apologies, Fabio Quattararo, as I go deep there into turn six. <laughs> My apologies. It's the second time already in today's video doing that but before we segue i just want to quickly say guys thanks for watching the video so far don't forget to subscribe if you are enjoying the video i'm trying to do a bit more of these 2024 in real life sort of content rather than just the usual gaming stuff of course we'll be still including the uh, the gameplay as you can see on screen but it's always nice to chat about real motor gp it's a subject i'm very passionate in and i absolutely adore motor gp so i like to bring in the questions and have a good old conversation with you guys about MotoGP. I've looked in the social media comments sections for MotoGP and for everything else and there's a lot of asinine comments from ridiculous people that just make everything personal. I like discussing things with the aces. We don't take things personal here. We, we discuss things properly as adults and we have our opinions and we share them without being judged and that's exactly what I'm trying to promote for this side of the Doctor Ace channel. I am a fan, I'm a fanatic, I'd love to talk to you guys about it, so that's why I'm trying to open the doors for this sort of content from now on, because we all need a safe space to talk about our passionate things, and I think that's a great spot for us to do it, there and in the Discord server as well. But 
I want to talk as well, not just about Fabio Quattro. Of course, the subject matter is that we've got the, the helmet in the game now and we've got uh, Fabio's number from Charlie and then, of course, Sergio with the helmet. We need to look at the the other side of the garage. The man who's replaced Fabio, uh, excuse me, Franco Morbidelli. And for me, I've said something that's probably either going to bite me on the backside or I'm going to be proven right. I think Alex Rins will either have a victory or a podium more than Fabio Quattraro. I think he'll have a more successful season than Fabio. And I don't think that's a, a term of riding ability. I think it's a mental state. And I think if Fabio is dejected in the testing to the point where he does look pretty miserable. I know someone said something pretty awful in a, um, in a post a few weeks ago. I think it was on Facebook or something like that. And Fabio had to cor correct them because it was completely wrong. It was false information, as you would always see with journalists, because you never really do see that many legitimate points. But Fabio was outraged by it, and he had to make a mention to it. But he still seems a bit off. He doesn't seem his jovial self. And I think from a fan's perspective, as someone who uh, pays attention to the rides a lot and watches the free practices, the uh, the press conferences, the qualifying, the everything. I watch everything. I love it. It's a, it's a huge fan of the sport. He doesn't look his same. So comparing it to Alex Rins, who could possibly jump into the team now and just say oh I don't care I've got nothing to lose here I've just got to do what I can I'm just going to go for it similarly I'm going to try and compare this to something like Alex Lowe's in World Superbike he's always been the number two rider since Jonathan Ray has been hogging the spotlight rightfully so because of course six time world champion but now that he's moved on I would expect Alex Lowe's to improve I would expect him to take the reins and say We've got no pressure now. Everyone's doubting us. Everyone's saying that Yam uh, Kawasaki aren't going to do anything now because Jonathan Ray's gone. So I would expect Alex Lowe's to step up big and him to deliver the good things next. I would also say the same for Andrea Locatelli in Yamaha. For him in World Superbike, it's a case of now the best rider, quite frankly, and quite, could possibly be in the world. Top rack Raz Gathley Oglu. He's moving on to the BMW Motorrad team. So Locatelli's got an op opportunity now to say, OK, no pressure. I finished fourth so many times, I'm always the bridesmaid or the best of the rest. Now it's time for me to go for it. And I think when you have that pressure removed, you can be the rider you want to be. So that's just a couple of examples I can give. Probably loads of examples. We've seen it many times before in MotoGP as well, of course. But those are just two fresh ones off my head because I'm really looking forward to World Superbike. So that's why I want to bring it up. And maybe if we... Uh, if we get this interest going with MotoGP, maybe we'd start a World Superbike conversation as well. Not sure how we're going to do it with gameplay-wise, but I'll figure something out so we can share and at least have some footage in the background as we discuss. But I guess that's uh, pretty much my point of today's video. And I just wanted to open this conversation to you guys because, as I mentioned, I really want to talk to you guys. I want to have a good old decision, a discussion. And finally have a safe spot for me to talk MotoGP without someone chucking in something personal that isn't relevant to anything. <laughs> I've said this before and I've said it again. There's a, <laughs> this is a complete segue, by the way. This is just a complete digression from the topic, but <laughs> I'll never forget it. In the Circuit of the Americas last year, Jack, Jake Dixon was looking really solid and it looked like he was going to have a good race. He crashed on the warm-up. And I specifically remember a comment saying in one of the Instagram or Twitter posts on Jake's feed that he, I quote, that, that, that Jake Dixon would have won if he would stop wearing stupid glasses on the grid. I mean, <laughs> that's the comments I you see on social media. And that's the comments I want to avoid when I want to just talk to you about MotoGP. So if I'm saying Fabio Quattararo has not done as as well as what we thought he would have done. We didn't think Yamaha has stepped it up compared to what we would have thought. I wouldn't expect someone to suddenly mention that, well, Fabio Quattraro is terrible because he dyed his hair blonde. You know what I'm saying? That's the things I'm trying to avoid. I mean, if I get something like that in the comment section, I'm afraid it, you, I'm not going to ignore I'm not going to acknowledge it. I still see these comments even on my stuff from people saying something completely asinine about a rider simply because of one certain thing happening. Maybe they turn them down for an autograph at, the, uh, at a fan convention or something like that. People can be very fickle. I can be as well. I'm absolutely no saint. I used to be incredibly biased when I was following Valentino Rossi. And I will gladly admit that because I was insufferable. <laughs> so I can admit that and I can accept it. So with that in mind, 
Welcome to your safe space to uh, discuss everything MotoGP with your host, Dr. Ace. But we are coming to the conclusion of today's video. I've got only a couple more laps in yet before I've got to crack on and get some more videos done because I've got to get MotoGP 23 career mode videos done as well. Very excited for the next race. It's going to be in Catalonia. And if you remember last season, Catalonia went really well. So I'm expecting big things for tomorrow's video in Catalonia. I just really want to get this subject discussed here today. I thought I was actually going to go improve the lap time there. I thought I was up on the delta momentarily. But now I've just realised my lap time was set previously with a 149.839. I believe that was with Joan Mir's Honda. But that was with balance performance on. For this video, I'm actually running balance performance off. So if you want to compare with my lap time today, I would recommend you do balance performance off so we have the same parameters to work with. But uh, before we continue any further, I just want to say big thanks to all the channel members who have been supporting the channel recently. I always include your names at the end of the video in the outro. And I just want to say a big thank you to you guys. I really appreciate the support. And to be honest, I don't think I talk about it enough. So I, I just wanted to dedicate this part of today's video to say thank you to the channel members, so I appreciate that a whole lot. But, to finish off the video, before we check the actual helmet design and number design, I just want to chuck in a few predictions for MotoGP 2024. I'm always so nervous about doing this, because I always find that whenever I predict or make a bet on something that's going to happen, I will do terrible. I... I once said, famously on one of my previous videos, I famously said that Alex Rins would win the championship. And I can't remember if it was 2021 or 2020. Or maybe 20... It was one of those. I don't remember which one it was because it was quite a while ago. But I famously said that Alex Rins would win the 2020 whatever at the number in world championship. And he crashed around 10 times that season. So ever since then I have been... So reluctant to make a prediction, but let's have a think about it. In MotoGP 23 right now, excuse me, MotoGP 2024 20, season, there is tons of names you could choose from. Everyone is going to have an opinion that's different to others. There's going to be a lot who agree on some, but there's going to be a lot that we disagree on. I have heard a lot of people saying straight away, off the bat, didn't even matter if he touched the Desmond Sedici GP23, but Mark Marquez will win the 2024 World Championship. I completely disagree with that. I don't think that's going to happen. No disrespect to the eight times world champion, but I don't think people give enough credit to how damn good Francesco Bagnaia is. He is the best rider in MotoGP today. He is by far unbelievable talent. Incredible with the Ducati. His, his style, everything works with the Desmo GP23, soon to be with the 2024, already significantly faster in the Qatar test. You're hard-pressed to vote against Peko Banyaya. But there's a rider that just screams to me that this could be the one. Could it be Inea Bastianini's season? For me, there's something that's in the back of my mind that says it could be Bastianini. It really could. He's so good. And towards the last, towards the last season, he obviously had the injury. The collision with Luca Marini as he dropped the bike in Portimao and it hit him uh, un unceremoniously. It was an accident, of course. That changed the landscape of an Air Bastanini season. What are we going to see with a fully healthy, race ready, and prepared in Air Bastanini? That's the big question. So I'm thinking him. I want to fully bias, say, Marco Betzecchi, but to be honest, my pick is between Bastanini and Pecco. It's hard to vote against him, it's kind of the easy option, but it makes sense to me. So, guys. Let me know your predictions in the chat down below. But for now, let's take a look at my lap times on screen before we take a better look at Sergio 23's helmet and Charlie's number. As you can see, not bad actually. With the balance performance off, we're about seven tenths of a second behind our lap time with uh, Joan Mir's Honda with balance performance on. But the pace was quite good, quite relatively consistent. I might come back to this with balance performance on and just compare the two because I think... There's opportunity here to really see which track features what, and does balance performance make that much of a significant difference? I guess we'll find out when we get 
to that video in the future. But uh, right on cue, there is Cheshire Charlie's uh, recreation of the number 20 for Fabio Quattararo. Of course, if you want to use that for your personal ride, you can download that on PC just by searching Fabio Quattararo. And of course, moving on to Sergio 23's excellent redesign of Fabio Quattararo's winter test helmet. Get in touch with a pair if you want something designed or something made, and I'll see you in the next video. So guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the comments for a chat. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Trace video.